Hi everyone, it's Phone Arena. Now that we got quite comfy with the BlackBerry Playbook, we're just going to take a closer, intimate look at the uh, Playbook's QNX-based platform. Just go back and tell you some of the features here, um, how it compares and what new things you could expect out of it, and how it's going to affect you at the end user level. And overall, we're just going to give you some critiques and some uh, neat insights as to what you could expect with this new platform. For starters, the QNX based platform on the uh, BlackBerry Playbook is very, it's a stark departure from what we've seen in the past out of RIMS Camp. Gone is the menu driven interface found with their pl mobile platforms. Instead, we get something a little bit more clean and straightforward. Honestly, comparing this to other, other available platforms out there like Android, um, or even the BlackBerry OS, um, it's very easy. It's a very short learning curve aside from the gestures getting adjusted to that. You can tell here with the home screen, it's pretty much clean looking. There's barely any clutter to it. At the top, you have just simply your clock and date. You have some other functions on the top here to get quick access to it. You have things like the BlackBerry Bridge. You have the orientation lock, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, the battery indicator there, and also your options here. With the uh, main menu, um, you notice this fluid nature, which is also translated well throughout the platform. It just moves at a responsive rate, gives you that tight feel to it. And you can tell it's pretty much just straightforward with its grid-like approach. And overall, it's definitely nice and easy to learn. Unfortunately though, what's lacking with the QNX based platform is any personalization. As you can tell, we just changed the wallpaper background, but that's pretty much it. You're limited to that. You can't do anything else. There's no widgets, nothing like that. Um, in order to change the uh, wallpaper, the only thing that you have to do is actually get into your pictures application, go under the wallpaper uh, folder, select one, and then do a swipe gesture and you could set it as the wallpaper. But that's it. Uh, hopefully down the road, there's going to be a little bit more just to give it a little bit of flair versus other platforms out there. Now the platform shares a little bit of similarities with HP Palm's WebOS platform because it's very big when it comes to gestures and we'll quickly demo that here for you. So here at the home screen you see all the open applications. If we launch one really quick here it's going to give you a really nice animation to bring it up to its maximized view. Now in order to minimize it all you, all you have to do is just do a swipe gesture from the bottom panel up and you notice it brings it to this bird's eye view and from here you have the carousel of uh, open up open applications and you could quickly jump into uh, any one of them very quickly if you want to close something out all you just all you have to do is do a quick swipe gesture like that and it automatically will get rid of it here so let's launch another one here if you want to be able to to switch between the apps very quickly without having to go to the bird's eye view you can do a swipe gesture from either the left or right bezels and as you notice here it automatically will switch between all any all of them here on top of that you have a swipe gesture from the top of uh, certain applications will have additional functionality such as this one here with the calculator you notice it gives you all the other options as well but if you go to something like the web browser if you do a swipe gesture from the top panel a top bezel it's going to give you additional functionality such as being able to move around between your open open tabs or even create a new one here uh, and finally the last swipe gesture is a diagonal one from either the top left or top right if you notice it brings up the bar here with the clock gives you act quick access to all the other functions as well so here's the Playbook's landscape style on-screen keyboard. You can tell the buttons are a little bit in a smaller size, but then again, it is a 7-inch tablet. You really can't put your fingers over the, all, all the buttons right here like you would a normal keyboard. It's basically a simple uh, one single press uh, experience here. Uh, it would be nice to see some numbers um, implemented to the top row here, but unfortunately you have to press the secondary function to access them here. Uh, overall, the speed is really nice. You could tell it's very responsive and manages to keep up with our fingers. It has a little bit of a learning curve, but after a while, I kind of get the feel for it. We actually like using the portrait style keyboard here, just because our thumbs are able to quickly cover the entire layout of the keyboard. And as you can tell here still, it's very responsive and quick, and overall, it's a decent experience. Naturally, one of the main reasons why people purchase tablets is the simple fact that they offer an ideal web browsing experience. And to tell you the truth, with the Playbook, it's probably one of the better devices for that. Now, we have our website right here loaded up. Um, it loads it up just like you see in a desktop. It has support for Flash and also HTML5. You could tell the animation, the Flash uh, ads here are running. It doesn't really slow down the experience. It doesn't make it choppy. It's still pretty smooth. And it's the best thing that we like about it. You have, you could double tap in there to 
you automatically resize the uh, the uh, display here. You have also multi-touch gesture support to zoom in, zoom out. You could tell it's pretty smooth in its operation. Kinetic scrolling is pretty smooth. Uh, might not be as smooth looking compared to the iPad 2, but it still gets the job done. And the other great thing about it is that you'll be able to interact with a bunch of different Flash content, just like you do on a normal computer. So from Flash games to videos, um, even YouTube clips, uh, you have that desktop-like experience. And overall, we're very happy with it. The Playbook's music player is pretty much bare bones and doesn't really employ any 3D visuals to its presentation, but it's very straightforward. Uh, so when you play a song, you have your album cover, you have your tracks here, your controls. If you do a swipe gesture up from the up from the top, uh, it allows you to uh, go through different different categories here. Um, if you go launch a different application at the bar on top here, you still have access to a mini player, so you have control to it. As far as the audio quality from the stereo speakers, it's actually quite good. Very powerful in its tones, it's very rich and deep. There's an occasional crackling at the loudest volume center, but it's not that irritating at all. And overall, we're just happy with the sound of it. Showing off its processing power, the BlackBerry Playbook is able to play high definition 1080p videos, no problems whatsoever. You could tell here is the uh, the quality is just amazing. The brilliant looking display just makes everything pop. Plenty of details and moves at a nice frame rate, no slowdown or any lag like that. We were able to also load up other videos coded in uh, MPEG4 and even DivX and played quite smoothly. Um, if you have a high definition television, you could connect the Playbook with uh, HDMI cable to it and you can still be able to experience all the high definition video stored on the device itself on your television set. The gallery app doesn't really stray from anything we've seen elsewhere. It lays it out in different categories. So we have your pictures here. So for example, if you have one here, you could swipe between all the different ones, zoom in with the uh, pinch gestures right here. Um, if you do a swipe down, you'll basically have the carousel of all the available uh, pictures stored on the device itself. Um, it, unfortunately, though, it doesn't have any sharing functionality like we find on Android or even some things like the, uh, the iPad where you could email it or send it to your social networking accounts. Uh, it's very limited in its offering and you really can't also edit the uh, photos itself. The BlackBerry App World is the place where you can get all your applications and just from right now uh, the offering is kind of slim with the available pool but at launch it's stated that it's going to have approximately 3,000 on board. So at the top here is your carousel of some featured ones. Some of them are free, others are paid. You can go to categories to narrow down the applications that you're looking for but unfortunately in our time with it it's kind of missing some of the key apps that you'd expect such as like a dedicated first party Twitter and even, even uh, a Facebook book Pandora stuff like that it's kind of missing right now but hopefully down the road that's gonna oh it's gonna become available on top of that it's gonna have support for Android apps which should open up a new highway for this device and really increase its capacity the calculator app is actually developed by the company that RIM acquired and they're known as TAT or the Astonishing Tribe and it has a really nice layout to it that we definitely like it a lot. So with the calculator you could do your different calculations here and on the left side you could see that it stores it. Um, if you do swipe gesture you get access to a scientific clock, a uh, scientific uh, calculator, the unit converter right there and finally you have a tip calculator as well. Fortunately, you've got a dedicated YouTube client on board with the playbook from the start, but when you compare this to other stuff like uh, what you find on Android or even iOS, it's kind of basic and limited here. For example, when you play a video, of course, it's going to do it in full screen, and it's also in high quality, so you have a really nice, a lot of detail to it. But if you minimize it, you have access. It takes advantage of the size of the display. You could read up on the video itself, some of the comments. But unfortunately, you don't have access to your account, so you can't really uh, place a comment or rate something. And kind of is, again, just uh, minimalistic in its approach. When it comes to location-based services, uh, what you get with the Playbook is the Bing Maps experience. And seeing that it's a new platform, it's still kind of minimal in terms of just features here. What you do get, you could search for local businesses or even address. You'll have the ability to get directions to view traffic. Um, and of course, you get your GPS fix as well. You could change the view from auto to something like the bird's eye view, which gives you that perspective look. But it kind of misses out on certain key features that we find with uh, Android and Google Maps, such as Street view or even free turn by turn directions. 
For those into reading ebooks, you'll find the Kobo Reader to be an ideal uh, experience for you. So when you select the book, it lays it out, especially in landscape, it's more ideal just because you have a two-page layout. You could read, you could flip through it. Of course, the only thing is the, uh, the contrast of the display you might want to lower it down just because it'll kind of get irritating to the eye, but it, it offers a decent experience. The weather app takes advantage of the entire display and it goes to show you how it's laid out perfectly for this size tablet. You could, you could get the temperature, the, the actual weather conditions time by time. You could look ahead, see what's gonna look like in the upcoming days. Uh, you could also check out the map if you want to. It opens up the web browser to show you that. And you have also an hourly view to show you a good indication of what to expect with the weather. The Playbooks clock app is pretty generic. From here, you could basically set an alarm. You could even add additional clocks. So if you want to go to different time zones, you know the different times everywhere. On top of that, you have also stuff like a stopwatch and also timer. Targeting business uh, professional grade users out there, we're happy to see that the Playbook uh, packs in data visits a set of productivity applications for Office. So for example, you could run the uh, Word to Go and basically you could create a new document. You have some of the functionality you find with Word, um, such as bold, underline, italics. You have also the ability to even um, uh, change, the, uh, change the alignment here. And you also have one for Excel. So we downloaded quite a few different applications that are available right now in the app world. We'll quickly show you them. For the most part with all of them, there isn't really anything captivating with them just because they're pretty much basic uh, in their operation here. Just like the piano, there's nothing really else to it. You can't even change the type of piano with it. We downloaded this third-party free Twitter client called TweetKL. Uh, not really the, that great just because you'll it's very slow and sluggish in its operation. And you can't do other things like be able to retweet or even upload videos. Uh, photos. You have this game here, which is basically like a Simon Says game, very easy. And you have this uh, missile missile commander type game, which just shows you off the type of uh, graphics power with the pl with the uh, playbook here. Well, hopefully down the road though, we'll see better first party and even third party applications on there, um, just to make it a very attractive platform. To truly show off its graphical power, you gotta experience the Need for Speed Undercover game. Uh, it takes advantage of just the uh, dual core processor within the tablet itself. You could tell here the performance is just astounding, very uh, smooth in its operation, and overall the gameplay is very fun. It takes advantage of the sensors, and of course you gotta use it in order to move move your car here. And again, you could either you could minimize it, and you could tell here it's still be able you'll still be able to play it. You could quickly switch to a different application. And what it does when you do that is that it pauses the game in, in the same state you're in so you could resume it. When you connect the playbook to your computer with a USB cable, you're gonna have to install some drivers first to have it uh, to to have your computer recognize it. But what you have when you do that, you'll be able to see the contents of the playbook, but it's only read only. You can't uh, you can't write to it. You'll need to use the BlackBerry Desktop Manager app to do that on your computer, so you can transfer videos, photos, and any other media. The Playbook's camera interface is mainly clutter-free, as you could tell, plenty of space for the viewfinder. You have the icon here for your shutter key and also the toggle there for your switching it to a video. If you do a swipe gesture on top, it brings you some different options here. You go into the picture gallery, you can turn on off the stabilization, change the different ratios. Uh, you can even choose the white balance on top, but it's very minimal. Um, you also have the ability to do a digital zoom, and you can switch to the front-facing camera. When you go to video, though, uh, the different options here here. You could shoot it in a variety of different formats, 480p, 720p, and 1080p. Of course, some preset white balance modes there. That's pretty much it, though. So there you go, everyone. That pretty much sums up the uh, Kyo Next Base platform on the uh, playbook itself. Uh, it's very nice. It's uh, definitely refreshing for RIM. Uh, there's still some stuff that needs to be worked out, and but in the coming months, hopefully, as we all know, updates should definitely improve the experience and also strengthen its uh, uh, its appeal to a bunch of different users out there, from business to even the casual consumer. So, well, if you want to learn more about the BlackBerry playbook and its Kyo Next Base platform or a review, you you can check out our website, phonearena.com.